Hello, my name is David Morales. I'm a collaborator of the International Rescue Project. Welcome to the new series, Agenda 2030 and God's Agenda. On this occasion, we will analyze together an important topic entitled Excuse for the Climate. Goal number 13, climate action of the 2030 Agenda is closely related to three others that have already been analyzed before. Goal number 7, guarantee access to affordable, secure, sustainable and modern energy. Goal number 8, Promote inclusive and sustainable economic growth, employment, decent work for all. Number nine, build resilient infrastructure, promote sustainable industrialization, and encourage innovation. As has been noted, the Sustainable Development Goals present a hopeful glimpse, apparently an agenda that brings answers to concerns and solutions. To various crises, at first glance, we all agree with them. They project them into a different and longed-for world. However, it is cyanide candy. Divine inspiration, through the prophet Isaiah, announced approximately 700 years before Christ, what our eyes see. Earth was destroyed. The earth fell sick. The world fell. The high people of the earth fell sick and the earth was polluted under its inhabitants because they transgressed the laws, perverted the law, broke the everlasting covenants because of this. The curse consumed the land and its inhabitants were devastated. For this reason, the inhabitants of the earth were consumed and men decreased. Currently, human beings are experiencing the consequence of their disobedience, which has directly affected the climate. A climate cataclysm is predicted and it is warned that we are not prepared to face its results. It has been concluded that climate change is due to human activities, posing a threat to life on Earth as we know it, impacting on extreme and changing weather phenomena as well as sea level rise. It is warned that if the effects of climate change are not controlled, they will raise the global temperature above 3 degrees C and will negatively affect all ecosystems. You can already see how climate change can intensify storms and disasters, as well as make threats such as food and water shortages become. And lead to conflicts due to the above, the 2030 Agenda, in its objective number 13, among other things, proposes the need to reduce emissions that pollute the environment, not only because it is the right thing to do, but also because it is convenient from the point of view, economic and business. The question is how to achieve it. The results obtained in the pandemic in relation to climate and the environment make clear the need to take breaks in secular activities. Some sustainability advocates have proposed days of rest or non-consumption as a way to reduce the carbon footprint. And in this sense, there's an interest in exploring the idea of a discouraging day globally. Where do you think this is leading us? In this sense, one of the points that Romanism has insisted on for years is the need for companies to cease their functions and allow the employee to rest on Sunday. So climate change is the perfect excuse to achieve that end. Pope Francis' words recently were Sunday. Please. It's the day to make peace with life. It is not surprising then that Pope Francis has been one of the firm defenders of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which was adapted by the UN General Assembly in 2015. On Wednesday, September 5th, 2018, 
Pope Francis, in his Catechesis on Weekly Rest, said the following, The journey through the Decalogue, the commandment on the day of rest, brings us today, for us Christians, the Lord's Day is Sunday. Then, on September 1st, 2020, Pope Francis asked to lead a sustainable life, expressing, let's let the planet rest. I invite all nations to adopt more ambitious national targets to reduce environmentally damaging emissions. Subsequently, on July 21st, 2024, in Angelos' Sunday prayer, he denounced the social injustice of the SEP dictatorship, which forces parents to sacrifice family sharing to seek daily food in this same order of ideas in an interview with the Clarin magazine of Argentina, the Supreme Pontiff. He revealed the formula for happiness. 10. Tips to be happy. What was interesting was that he listed as Ted number 5, sharing Sundays with family. The other day in a Capo Bazo, I went to a meeting between the university world and the working world. Everyone demanded non-working Sunday. Sunday is for the family, he said. Now, target number 13. It promotes climate action and emphasizes the following. Standing idly by will end up costing us much more than if we take immediate action. Globalism seeks, therefore, to implement globally a series of measures that should be adopted by all countries with the excuse that it will bring the common good to the planet, a trend towards general well-being in some cultures, even without being mandatory. Rest days or work breaks have been promoted to improve personal and environmental well-being, opening the door to local or religious initiatives that align with these objectives. Now, the implementation of policies related to climate change may involve an increase in government intervention and regulation, which will undermine individual responsibility and religious freedom. All that is needed is the will, the support of the majority of the population, and we are not far from this happening. Intense droughts, water shortages, serious fires, sea level rises, floods, melting of the polar ice caps, catastrophic storms and loss of biodiversity as a result of global warming are therefore the perfect excuse for countries to join and come, criteria that will lead to finally establishing the Sunday law. Faced with the imminence of said event, we must remember that the prophecy points to the union of peoples against the commandments of God. The commandment that orders the sanctification and observance of the Sabbath has been changed, and today we seek to venerate a day that was ordained by man. However, the Lord will have a people as loyal as steel. And with faith as firm as granite, its members must be His witnesses in the world, instruments that must carry out a special and glorious work on the day of their preparation as followers of Christ. We are in favor of environmental conservation and we promote ecological actions without the need to strip countries of their sovereignty by imposing international policies and regulations on the other hand. We will never support plans that go against what was established by God, such as the adoption of a common day that is not pleasing instead of what God indicated. In this case, it is necessary to obey God before men. We need a firm trust in God. If we wish to be kept from the power of satanic elements, if we hold fast to the teachings of the Word, the truths of that Word will be our safeguard, keeping us safe from the errors of His last days. We need the truth. We need to believe in it. Its principles adapt to all the circumstances of life, prepare the soul for duty, and strengthen it for trial. Bears the mark of its divine author. They exert a protective influence on all who come into contact with her dear friend. We invite you to be part of God's agenda. 
be part of that group that lives conscientiously, that makes proper use of resources and remains on the side of what is right, even if the earth shakes and the heavens collapse. The minority that will stand firm for what God has established must cling to His promises in the midst of a world that goes against God's designs. His people will seem intransigent and will be seen as opposed to what could change the world for the common good as an execrable minority that is reprehensible, condemnable or detestable. But in their hearts they have a principle and in their lips a slogan, times to act. O Jehovah, because they have invalidated your law, Psalms 119 verse 126. Dear friend who listens to me, we want to invite you to reflect on what we have studied. In this video, we invite you to contact us and we will gladly help you understand more about God's agenda, His plans and purposes for your life. Each of us must strive to seek God's pleasure and blessing for us and our families. Thank you very much for sharing with us another episode of the Rescue Series. God bless you. We want to invite you right now. So that we see a prayer to the Lord, blessed God in your presence. We are. We thank you for the lives of our friends, O oh, blessed God. We do not want to fail. We want to honor you. We want to obey you and receive your blessing. Give us the strength of heaven and wisdom to be able to discern between good and evil and always choose the path of righteousness. We put our families in your hands. And we ask that you can bless each one of the friends who has connected in this hour. In the name of Jesus, we ask for everything. Amen. May the Lord bless you greatly. Once again, we invite you to contact us on the page that appears on the screen. And remember that Jesus loves you.